Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Alias Season 5, Thoughts. Just got done with the finale, gonna do that first. When... When the, the child, Sydney, I, I guess, yes, yeah, the very first thing. I like how similar, I don't know if it's, I doubt it's the same actress, but how similar kid, Sydney, kidney, looks to, you know, slightly older Isabel, you know, Isabel after she's, you know, a baby there at the end, how the moment we see her there at the end, we maybe kind of think that we're looking at Kidney instead of Kisabelle, and, you know, as opposed to Baby Bell, is a baby. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a nice little bit, you know, because we've seen Kidney all throughout the episode, so we maybe think, and then we hear, Isabel, so it is kind of, oh, we skipped ahead some years, and yeah, I, th I think they did a, a nice job with that. Of course, the first time we see Kidney, and it's like, you know, what, just, just, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up, and then, you know, smash cut to, you know, I, okay, so what she wants to be when she grows up is a reenactor of the finale of The Shining, evidently. And then we have the, you know, of course, this, you know, come on, you're stronger than, you know, you're, you're strong, Sydney, and, you, you know, you're stronger than this. You've never given up on anything in your life. And the, yeah, I, I like how they show us these really important moments in Sydney's life that that we hadn't seen before. You know, we, we see Francie again. They didn't get Will back, but, you know, he, you know, he has been back, you know, more, more recently. So, yeah. And just, yeah, these, you know, so Francie was the one who said, she, you know, who gave her the idea to be a teacher, and, you know, the same day as that, she, you know, joined, yeah, she, she started taking those tests, and something that I didn't really think about until this, you know, most recent viewing, I suppose that Sydney actually wasn't that, like, you know, she didn't necessarily have the best skills in the physical sense before the whole training to be an agent. You know, she, it, they don't say a lot about it, but Will does say, you know, that they apparently met in like high school because she was a little, you know, the, the, she like dropped her books, some, something like that. And so we helped her out, and you know we we're told by her that you know when she she tells Rachel when she took those tests that was the first time she really felt she belonged somewhere. So yeah, I I guess that really is the you know she 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 started at the bottom and now she they yeah. anyway the. I, I also think that it it really helps show the the actor's range. I mean, Sloan looks positively caring when he tells her. You know, I mean, there's there's part of it of him just saying, you know, this this you know, are you sure you want to, you know, like almost trying to scare her away. But what he says actually is quite true, and yeah, he genuinely kind of seems like he doesn't want. I mean, he says he loves her as a daughter, so. Especially back then, so yeah. And the 
when when Jack when she tells Jack, you know, I I you know robbed a bank. I joined, you know, I started working for you know, Sydney. Working for a bank doesn't mean you rob the bank. It means you rob regular people. And the the yeah the the look on Jack's face and you know we the viewer know it's not because he think you know oh this is you know this is a bad decision like the first thing he thinks is Sloane you you know you knew that I would hate this how could you do this? you know you betrayed me again and it's you know and he tries to drive Sydney away from it. Not because, yeah, because he knows, you know, I mean, for one thing, it's the spy life. He always wanted a safer life for her. But for another, it's SD6, you know, and, you know, and then she spends, what was it, seven years, I think, working for them without knowing. Because, you know, he can't, like, like he says, you know, it's not, you can't make that choice for them. You, you know, she can't make that choice for Dixon. It has to be yeah anyway you know the, and and Francie you know warns her it's it's it is dangerous being a teacher you know kids are bringing knives to school republicans are trying to destroy the, all the opportunities for teachers and have been destroying a lot of them now the but but yeah you know you have the the Actually, I think it's not Vaughn with Sid. I think it's 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 Sid with Jack. You know, she's all like, "You're gonna be okay. Say the words." Yeah, I really do. The the attack on the the that final place of Ramboldi. Let's let's go with Ramboldi's tomb, since the, it does genuinely say my Ramboldi down there. You know, yeah. When they when they just attack. I mean, at first there's like a sniper, or at least that one guy yells sniper. Then suddenly Sydney's running in, and then we have Vaughn and Jack running in. It's just maybe they didn't have much time to gather like proper weapon. I'm I'm thinking like the time they they attacked that place where they were messing around with Sydney's DNA and trying to you know yeah get get a new Rambaldi you know through her eggs. And, you know, there they actually go in with, with, like, assault rifles and such. And it feels like maybe they didn't have time, but if they got at least one sniper, then use the sniper. Don't run in with, with pistols, you know. I mean, they're, they're not even dual with it. Obviously, that messes up your aim. But it just, it really seems like they, they really needed to have you know, this this kind of Mexican standoff that then very quickly, you know, it's it's like, you know, you, I mean, you even have, not, not in this exact instance, but you do have, you know, in the show, people looking like someone they're not, and someone almost gets killed because of it, and such, you know, I mean, just, what, an episode or two, maybe, ago, you know, Sloan almost killed Sydney because he thought that it was Anacid, when in reality, it was Sid and Sid. I believe credit for that one goes to my ex fiance who pointed out that, that, yeah. But, but yeah, it just, you know, it's, it's straight up, you know. He's Archer, I'm Troy, and I'm bored. It's, it's the, the, they, they really needed, you know, Jack to come in and be gunned down, and then. You know, yeah, just a really quick resolution when really didn't seem like the the other, you know, the people defending it were that well armed. I don't know. I guess you, you know, maybe they were worried that they didn't have time to properly take it down. But it does seem like a huge risk to take. And of course, you have with the fight, you know. Arena and Sydney there in the finale, you know, which is a pretty good fight. It's it's not real, you know, it's not quite up to the the standard of really great alias fights, but it's it's pretty good. And I do like how you know it's sort of you know, the the there's that thing of you know you're tougher than anyone I know or something like that in the flash, you know. 
yeah, flashback, let's go with that. And then she gets like thrown through the air. That was a pretty good start there. And, you know, and it ends with this very, you know, it seems like it, it is a callback to Nadia and the, the glass and, you know, and, you know, really it was, it was slowing when the glass was breaking, but yeah, that, that situation and, you know, talk about breaking through the glass ceiling, it, you know, the, the lines, you know, so it's, it's come to this one. Yeah, it's the finale. Obviously it's going to, you know, and Sydney, why are you fighting this? Because it's the finale. Anyway, that might be more or less what I have on the for for now. I'm, I'm sure I'll think of more. Now I love the new intro. You know, it. I, I think it's the best of the show. The you know this really tone of you know spying adventure action. And it now includes all of the main characters, although as my ex-fiance pointed out, it really shouldn't have had the new additions before we really knew that they were new additions, before they, you know, they joined the the team, or at least, you know, yeah, we, we saw them more than one time, so that it wasn't, you know, oh, I guess those guys are sticking around, you know. And of the, the people seen you know, of the people who've had an alias. I think the only person not seen in an alias in the intro is Sloan. And considering how goofy some of those look, most of those look, it's probably a good choice. Now, the I, I honestly, I wish more of the seasons had different intros. I, I think I mentioned this in the fourth season thoughts as well, but you know, I get why, but I do think I'm I'm really glad that they went elsewhere with you know these intros in these last two seasons and I understand like arguments against the you know season four when it's made it's too much or I I I like the original one but I do think that the moment that you know maybe season two would have been a good place to start doing maybe a new intro per season I I think that would have been pretty cool maybe maybe even customize it to the the tone of that season the the overarching kind of you know the season two something with like can Sydney trust Irina you know season three something with a love triangle and or trauma of losing two years you know season four Nadia's main character and then here in season five you know the the new team members losing Vaughn, etc., etc. And you know our our guys are still APO, although now it's it's Jack who's the boss since Sloan. Yeah, he's he's really made out to be a bad guy here. You know, like with Arena and the finale, it is this thing of we we need them to be evil now. When yeah, it's just much more interesting when they have, you know, the, the moral gray areas, but yeah. And we have the super OTT brutal murder of both Vaughn and the general from Prison Break. And, you know, my ex-fiance pointed out the, the crash, you know, at the start of the season opener and the, you know, end of the season four finale is very much a parallel to the arena car extraction. And, you know, with Vaughn supposedly dead, Sid, you know, investigates Prophet 5 so that she can have him back. And the... Uh, with, with that, we also do have the, you know, as my ex-fiance also pointed out, is this yet another drug for the, you know, to, to fake someone's death, because, you know, we've, we've seen before, but the, yeah, it's, yeah, and, you know, I, I would say that, you know, losing him, even, you know, we the audience maybe thought, although apparently some figured out right away, which, you know, they do set it up right here in the, you know, per personally, I don't think that we needed to see 
the sipping in this episode. You know, later in in the horizon, in the episode of the horizon, we see the doctor again, and he comes in with it, and he says, "Okay, when he drinks, make sure he sips it slowly." You know, and and in this ep, you know, right after he sipped some of it, he crashes. So, you know, second time in the episode. You know, so yeah, it is right there. I I do think that it would have been fine to just have like a flashback, not have a real. I've I've seen this kind of fake out done where they didn't show something that we could use to to piece together exactly what happened. But you know, anyway, we the audience are supposed to think he's dead, but. Even without him being dead, you know, Sid doesn't know how long it's going to take to take down Prophet Five. So, yeah, you know, the idea of her losing him does get to you, and so does the idea of you know Nadia just being gone. You know, both for Sid and some for Sloan. I, I, I do maybe think it's, you know, maybe it did get a little too. Felicity and lose its edge in this season. That could explain why Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible 3 is so Felicity rather than Alias. And more in, in that vein, Rachel cries a bunch and you know, there are these shots of her looking out over the horizon, the, the actual horizon, not the, you know, Rimbaldi artifact. You know, somewhat similar to Lost's Kate. And, you know, Sydney tells Jack, you know, I love you, and almost says goodbye, you know, before the finale. It's, yeah, maybe it, it got a little too much in that direction and you know there being less Vaughn is in part a budgetary issue and he is in I believe eight of the 17 episodes and Tom is very much a Jack light with some Vaughn you know they, they stopped trying to make Vaughn cool and just brought in a new guy if it was cool you know they needed someone at APO so he joins and you know, he is this type, you know, he's usually a loner, and he's somewhat aggressive, you know, Jack recruits him, and there is some trouble with him early on. Ultimately, I don't think he's interesting, the, you know, there's not that much growth, he, it boils down to him being a stock, gritty, brooding, quiet, anti-hero character. You know, there's a little bit of pain in... There's there's pain in his past because of you know his wife, but you know they they make it seem like there's more to it with you know who is the cardinal. And I, I'm not here because of that and that whole thing. And then at the end of the day, yeah, he he wants to kill the guy, and you know he feels he always felt guilty about it, and then he finds out you know you you probably should feel guilty because I was gunning for you. And, you know, then when he leaves Rachel's place, it's, you know, this thing of, I, you know, oh no, I did it again, I'm gonna get her killed. Then they don't even have Tom be the one who, like, is, you know, up front, get, you know, when, when, you know, the person up front, when they save Rachel and Marshall, you know, it, I, it's either Vaughn or Sid, I don't remember exactly. Tom is there, you know, he runs in right after, so, yeah, it just, it, that seems like it might have been a good time to do that kind of thing, you know, maybe even have the others show up just, a f you know, a few seconds later and like, you, you ran in when I told you we were almost ready, I know, but I had to, you know, something, but, yeah. We have almost no vice, and now that the show is completely over without it being a spoiler, I can say I I already mentioned in the season four one I like Nadia and Weiss together. I really think that it would have been um, that there should have been some kind of goodbye. I mean, I don't think they even had time to tell him. I'm pretty sure he wasn't in a scene with her 
once she came out of the coma in this season. And I just feel like, you know, I mean, they did have him for those two episodes, just briefly have a proper goodbye. Maybe he just says it to, you know, her at the in the bed or something, or some kind of, you know, once Sloane has killed her, you know, however accidentally, you know, it's it's one of those nice, you know, what I didn't mean to kind of fiction kills, you know, with, I, maybe it's me, I don't think I would, you know, be that, like, you know, that physical, that close to that frail of that glass, that table. I just, I feel like that might have been, like, you know, even if he didn't think that it would kill her, just be like, be careful of the table, honey, or, or maybe she, you know, she throws it in the fire, maybe get out the way of the, of the glass table, yeah, anyway, yeah, I, I really think he should have had, a, gotten a chance to say goodbye. Now, in the season, we, have, of course, have Raven, who, you know, an assassin who genuinely actually killed agents, you know, which, in my ex-fiance point out, makes it a little harder to, you know, really be on her side to, to cheer her on. And, you know, she does have quite the penchant for, you know, throwing knives. I, I really rather like, you know, she she gets up and like, oh, I, I don't even know. No, 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 trust me on this, you know. I wonder how many people she kills accidentally because she overreacts. She's maybe a little too parent. Maybe that's it. Like, she's not really an assassin. She just, she knives anyone that she thinks might be a threat. And most of the time it's like, oh, whoops. Sorry about that, and she just gets the heck out of there. But yeah, you know, throws two knives, and she she has them completely. She just you know reaches in, and she has them completely ready. It's it's like it's Navajas level, you know. But crossover, do it. You know, neither actor is too old for that. Yeah. So, you know, and, and then she, you know, gets out a gun, she gets in front of the car, shoots the, you know, fires enough time to shoot the driver, then she's, she gets out another gun, now that she doesn't have to aim as carefully anymore, and just empties these guns into the back of the, the van, you know, that was quite good, and, I mean, at the end of the day, it basically made sense. Obviously, the van is full of people working for the, you know, or again, it's possible that there are just two vans driving fast in the, and again, she has to really apologize to, you know, I mean, she is really high on the CIA list, and then she says, I, I must have slid down some, maybe she just, you know, kept a low profile for a while and didn't accidentally kill someone, so, yeah. And she's French, which of course means she's ridiculously sultry. Like, no matter what the situation, she's always got the, the lips and the, the hair and the just, yeah. And given that Jen was pregnant, so became Sid. And, you know, right up until the very end of the season opener, they were hiding her pregnant belly. Then, you know, we jump ahead four months, so the two were synced. And then they start rubbing her belly in our face all the time, you know, like every, I get that every alias is going to be, you know, she's pregnant, but then, you know, it's like, oh, you know, breast milk and the, you know, you know, oh, a joke, of course, yes, I'm pregnant. Just, yeah, it, it got pretty excessive. And again, I'm, I'm not saying that you can't do drama from that. I'm saying, you know, you don't have to do it every single time. And also with, you know, okay, so the father's not around. Again, we get it. Please move on to, to other things. You know, take some of the time you allotted for this, spend it on Weiss, Nadia kind of stuff. Or, yeah. And, you know, given that Rachel is the least kick-ass major female character on the show, she was cast as one of the main female gay ass characters on in the first G.I. Joe movie. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I have no problem with, you know, 
I'm, I'm going to get in a little bit into her character. I have no problem with Rachel Nichols. I actually, I quite like her in pretty much everything I've seen her in, which I, I'm i not sure is necessarily more than this and G.I. Joe 1, which I, I, I've mentioned this before. Not many people came out of G.I. Joe 1 looking good, but I would say she managed. And I... I want to say it's Sienna. Crap, is it Miller or Gilroy? I'm I'm pretty sure it's the one who's kind of made a career out of playing the brainwashed main female working for the bad guys, who you know is really supposed to be working for the good guys. But yeah, I just I I love that when when you know okay we've captured this is one of our main enemies. She's this is an incredibly dangerous person. I know. Let's brainwash her in a way that's easy to fix. You know, I mean, this is this is such. So many bad guys do this. You know, it just. Yeah. Anyway. You know the the, and and Rachel is you know betrayed in the quote unquote new pilot. You know, it takes a. A few episodes of this season, but yeah, and you know, supposedly she's the Mockingjay. I mean, Mockingbird. That's not J Lo is the Mockingjay. Anyway, the I I hate to say, it, but I found her kind of grating on this viewing. You know, she's she's kind of whiny and weak. I'm not talking about how she didn't want to go back to the exploded office, and you know, I mean, even on the way out, she might have had Arnst on her, but. And, and nor her reaction to being betrayed. I just, yeah, a, a bunch just kind of scared and, and weak, and then you know, and then at the end, oh, she's in deep cover, you know. Now she's like this, you know, bad, and she does a perfect brush pass in the I want to say opening of the finale, or maybe it's the maybe it's the episode before. Anyway. Yeah, suddenly she's like super capable. I mean, even early Vaughn wasn't this bad. And, you know, I, I did get to thinking maybe it's intentional to make us not think as little of Vaughn as we, you know, see, he could be even weaker, much like how they cast Tom. To actually make Vaughn look weaker. Yeah, I guess the, maybe the two are supposed to balance each other out. I don't know. And, you know, ultimately it's to give, it's to allow Sydney to be a mentor, you know, making her really important and, yeah, in, in spite of the, the baby. And Rachel does improvise interestingly and sometimes she really does come through for them and of course as a major female character on this show she does get to be strong at least some and yeah given that Jen slash Sid could not do as much this season because of the baby they you know they brought on people to pick up the slack somewhat. I, I do think that it's noteworthy. She is still in every single... She's There's not a single episode. The, the full show has 105 episodes. She is in every single one. You know, the... the yeah, pregnancy and... It's, you know, and, and the time after... You know, my, my ex-fiancé pointed out, they really threw her in, you know... Right, you know, as soon as she was like done being pregnant in real life, they, you know, she's got a big fight and all this physical, stuff, you know, it's almost like they they forgot that she wasn't a a guest character because apparently that's what they do with all the guest characters as well. Anyway, so Rachel comes in to be sort of her smarts, her analysis and insight, and then you you know you add some martial tech savvy in there, and Raven takes over the action stuff mainly and you know Rachel does get to do a few aliases and she gets to beat up Peyton which is quite nice given that Carrie's been so strict ever since she got pregnant 
I feel bad that Marshall Raven, you know, couldn't get together because obviously they couldn't. Given that, you know, they can really talk tech to each other, although I do really like, you know, they gave her an actual, you know, she got to go in and be important again to do her old job a little bit and really help out. And in general, I think they, they did pretty decently on that in, you know, I, I've already talked about how in the finale they go in and bring back characters and make you know give them some importance and you know yeah just various things and we maybe learn things about them you know uh, apparently Sid was al always wanted to rescue everyone you know and, and Sloan's like even back then I wondered if you would ever learn you can't save everyone you know and that that is the core of her character. She wants to be able to save everyone, that no one should have something bad happen to them, you know, basically. And I, I, I quite like, I think that's a very good, you know, story that I, I doubt it's something that they wrote down early on. It's, it's something that they made up for that a little bit. And yeah, it, it, it hits the, the character. It hits it gets the character just right. It, it doesn't hit the character on the head of the nail. Yeah, because the character is not, as far as we know, a vampire. The episode Nocturne notwithstanding. And just, yeah, you know, give, give them important parts to play and such. Yeah. And the... I feel like the the first two episodes of the the season, like you know, Rachel was contractually obligated to be in those episodes. Yeah, I mean, I would actually have liked if the first time we got a look at her was when she ran from the cafe. That way, we wouldn't even have known that Sid was at the wrong person. You know, may, maybe even do like flashbacks. You know, you can have Gordon Dean walking up to a hacker and then, you know, once you see, you know, her face running away from the cafe, you know, then flashback and then she turns to face Gordon and then, you know, maybe originally have him reacting to her saying, I know, or, well, actually that would give away that it wasn't the guy. Anyway, yeah, just, you know, flashback to that and, yeah. And also, Mental note, never take acid from Marshall. With Ray, Rachel, you know, they try to do a kind of redoing of, you know, the, the pilot with, and the, the taking down of the, you know, kind of SD6 2.0. And it feels kind of jumping the shark and it just it has much less impact than the the yeah when when they took SD6 down and you know supposedly the Alliance of Twelve and and also just the idea that you know after the Alliance of Twelve there are still you know these twelve really bad guys who are you know yeah that, that, you know, still have a ton of power, and, you know, the, the Prophet 5 is even more secret than, you know, the, the SD, and, you know, I mean, at least the 12 SD cells, the CIA had known about for years. Prophet 5 was barely, there was barely any proof of at all. It's just, yeah. And I, I do quite like, you know, the, the scene of Peyton gunning them all down, you know, dual-wielding SMGs, that's pretty badass. In, in general, Peyton got to be badass a lot. Now, the, you know, Sloan 2, well, 3, Gordon Dean isn't too bad of a bad guy. And, you know, and there's this idea of, you know, they are, they've infiltrated all governments of the world. 
and this season keeps introducing new bad guys and then killing them off. Yeah, it keeps us guessing, but it also gets really confusing and makes it feel like filler. You know, I'm, I'm not even sure all of them particularly get to accomplish anything. And there's really no emotional payoff to Raven killing her father and, you know, even the, the doctor, you know, Dr. Lynch or something, you know, even she turns out to be evil. I, I like the, you know, they gave Rachel this ice pick. She, she does have a little bit of a Sharon Stone thing going on. And, yeah, the, the fight between her and Peyton is quite nice. And, you know, the, the dialogue there, you know, I've, I was, I heard it was going to kill you, but I would have felt bad about it. I suppose that's more or less. Yeah, the, the you know, when they're at, at the top of the platform over water and they're shot at, there's a helicopter there and someone jumps into the water, you know, right out of face off. Which is not the first time that the, the show has made me think of, you know, I already mentioned one earlier in this video. And my ex fiance pointed out that maybe, you know, Sloan was too humanized with how much he cares about Emily, you know, as seen in earlier seasons and in season four, you know, about losing the baby, which was apparently what led him to, you know, delving deep into the whole thing with Ramboli because, you know, she kind of shut off and yeah, I, I don't think it's it's too much. I think it's just it makes you know it makes him a more tragic character and a more interesting character. You know, ultimately he is a villain. You know, they've kind of you know kind of explored the idea of him being redeemable in you know in the very seasons. I not really so much in this one. Again, you, in this they play him just as a villain, which was interesting but yeah and just at the end of the day I don't think that he could truly redeem himself not you know forget what we've seen him do just what we know he's done for all these years you know decades and just and at the end of the day he ultimately keeps choosing Ramboldi this obsession and faith over the you know, the two women in his life who both represented his humanity and brought it out in him. And yeah, he continues to choose Ramboldi over them. You know, he, yeah, you know, Nadia gets killed and he, you know, even when her healing was so hard won. And I really like the 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 you know her role after that that she is this you know she's she's not like a ghost or something she is just his conscience and Mia Maestro plays it so well this you know possessed bitter dark you know version of of Nadia well not even really not yet you know the the demon of his obsession just you know this, this is not Nadia this is you know his yeah his his obsession the the or the, yeah the, the last little bit of humanity that just you know some some part of him does think that you know this is you know what what he's doing the 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 fact that he's chosen Rambaldi is just truly truly makes him despicable and then there at the very end even she abandons him and with you know we we do get some more arena in this season and yeah, of course, she's just pure evil in the finale so that, you know, Sid can kill her. Although she really does 
end up killing herself. But yeah, you know, the the stabbing with the, the shard and yeah. And the that that Irina actually tries to kill her with the, the shard and it's it's less interesting for a character. Again, the, the moral grays make their characters much more interesting, but yeah, making the you know making Sloane fully embrace the, the villain and making Arena a full villain, you kind of do need that for the the finale to have you know, so that it's not really that we're like, oh no, don't, you know, where, you know, earlier we've to some extent kind of hoped that they could go good, that they could come back or the like, but yeah, and yeah, you know, Lena Olin plays it perfectly, you know, the truly ruthless. And you know, speaking of ruthless, my ex fiance pointed out that that would, you know, Jen, Jen could probably not quite play that perfectly when, you know, when she's playing Anna. But yeah, speaking of Anna, way too easily defeated. You know, Sydney shoots her from behind, even, you know, and Vaughn fights her even starting out strong. You know, we know that Vaughn couldn't even, you know, remotely beat Sydney, and Anna's beaten Sydney many times. So, yeah, I, I realized that the effects would be, you know, it would be very demanding, and certainly the last season, the effects, yeah. But a proper final fight between Sid and Anna, I, I guess we did kind of get that on the train, but just that, you know, I don't know, maybe that should have been the very last, and then, you know, have it be someone else who, you know, start, who, who comes to look like Sid. And they, they don't even really get much drama out of Anna now looking like Sid, you know. The... You know, they go through the whole Helix thing if if it is supposed to still be the, you know, I'm, I'm not sure we really saw the Helix machine before now, so, but, yeah, I mean, I guess you could say that the fact that she could get close enough to Raven to kill her, but then, you know, that, that she trusted her that, you know, in the, earlier in that episode, you know, she makes that clear, but they, they don't really do anything, you know, and, and Raven dies as she looks up at Sid, and yeah, I mean, they could have the, the real Sid, not knowing that it wasn't the, you know, they, they really should have explored that theme that, you know, yeah, maybe, like, have Raven straight up say, you know, there aren't many people I trust, the, you know, most people who get close to me, who have gotten close to me, you know, I didn't, trust I didn't turn around because I I knew they might stab me in the back and then you know and it's you know and there's this look of you know I I guess that was what they were going for you know this look of just complete betrayal you know and I'm, I'm sure the, the actress could pull it off but yeah they just they don't really go for it enough and you know, yeah, Jen does a really good impersonation of, of Anna when she, yeah, and I suppose that's and Sloane is, of course, defeated, which everyone wanted to see right from the pilot. Of course, not everybody was happy with how it happened and the fact that Jack died as part of it. But Jack sacrifices himself to save Sydney, which he always has. This is he's gone on suicide missions to save Sydney, and you know, as as much as he's appreciated that she 
you know, when she then came to save him, he's also, you know, scared that something could have happened to her. And yeah, the, the, and, you know, with Sloan, I mean, we're told, you know, it's, it's, what was it, 200, I don't know if they said feet or meters, let's, let's go with feet. I mean, what's that, 100 people? That's, and, yeah, the, the, considering that it was, like, you know, built out of stone, and that, you know, yeah, I mean, it would be almost impossible to properly dig out to, you know, to get all the way down there, and, you know, I guess it's, you know, and, and for sure Sloan won't be able to get himself free, so yeah, no one will get Sloan out. The the secret of the you know the the fluid for the you know that is also safe down there. And uh, you know, I think that it would have been nice to have just like a line, maybe maybe a shot from you know bird's eye view of like okay, clear, you know, no one can recognize this place. It's not even, like, the, the whole thing caved in and maybe a line about, okay, we're making sure to bury it and we are seeking out and destroying all information that leads to there, you know, the, the coordinates and such. You know, they found it once, let's make sure they don't find it again, you know. I do quite like that Sark is, you know, in the, the mission that you know, Dixon proposes there at the end, and, you know, apparently, I, he's he's just watched too many action movies with the kind of brooding anti-hero, because he keeps showing up and trying to get them back for one last job, so, yeah. And he's been, like, deputy director, I mean, that's, that's nice, and, you know, of course he deserves it, but I thought that what we established, you know, in, in season four, he... It's better to have him in the field, but yeah. And you know, Nadia, the Mia Maestro, is in half the episodes, and you know, some of them it's just her lying there in the bed or maybe briefly waking up. But then, you know, I I didn't really count, but I think maybe at least half of her presence is just her as you know Sloane's conscience. So. Yeah, quite nicely done. And again, I mean, that is something the show does really well. Giving, putting these people in different situations, you know, making the their characters do very different things. You know, and after, you know, I mean, she dies just having given up faith in him. Just having, you know, yeah, you know, she throws the the you know the page away to fully get yeah so that so that he yeah to to get him away from Rambaldi so when he imagines her of course there's this bitterness of you know you killed me you know it's it's like what a sec secondary i guess but you know you killed me in favor of Rambaldi you know and the, you know, we can have the Mueller device, you know, it's, it's in 60% of the, of the finales, you know, so, yeah, something I really like is that they kind of found new ways to, you know, new things to do with it, you know, when we first just you know, when, when we see the Mueller device in the pilot, it's just this weird thing, and then, you know, she, this, you know, she accidentally deactivates it, and the, the floating little ball comes, you know, and it's like, how did that thing work, you know, and then when we see it in the season one finale, it's much, much bigger, and, yeah, you know, it's, didn't we know even then that it was powering something and she, you know, and then it's again, you know, have to destroy it and then, you know, the water that comes out of it is actually dangerous. And then in season four, it's, 
you know, it's huge, it, and it's powering something extremely devastating, and it's this thing of, we can't just destroy it, we have to disable it. And then it's, again, here, and now it's actually giving off some fluid, and it, yeah. I, I think that they did a good job of making it different, you know, because when you think about it, you know, it's the same exact, it's the same exact artifact, these, you know, four episodes, I guess, uh, yeah, and, yeah, it really is this thing of, they have to make up something new that, about it, new way to deal with it, and, yeah, I, I think they did a pretty good job. And with you know, we we do get decidedly more Sark than we did in season four. And you know, I mentioned in the season four thought, you know, they they maybe didn't have as much you know have no know what to do with him. And you know, they did amazing stuff with him in seasons one through three. They they came up with more really cool stuff to do here. I I like that he actually you know he says you know I I I don't really want to do this. I just wanted to be on the winning side, and yeah, he he doesn't really you know have an have an interest. I do think that it you know so now Sloane is fine with working with him again after the but you know I mean when you're making Sloane the villain. Yeah, we want to see Sark, you know, more, and you know, and having him as this kind of freelance, it it makes sense. It's kind of he's always just been working for whoever, you know. He was always a dog in search of a master, and yeah, now he's just, you know, for hire for anyone, and they actually hire him, and you know, on the. On the commentary track, they point out that it's supposed to be like she's, you know, it's this situation of, of a woman having sex with the wrong guy. And yeah, I, I really rather like the, you know, I will gag you. And the, you know, the thing about, you know, my fiance pointed out, it, you know, does sort of really seem like the cuddling type, but it's still the, you know, let's get this straight. You were the one stupid enough to let me into your room, you know, and afterwards you were the one who wanted to cut. I don't, there's at least one more thing in there, but I don't quite remember. And, you know, I like, you know, when, when they're in, in France and, like, you know, they're in this apartment building and the tag team is trying to get in there, you know, very Leon, really, really rather like that. You know, and, and Peyton goes, you know, it's okay. I only need two, and then, yeah, I I can appreciate that, but that's no excuse to reenact, you know, one of the first things that happen it happens in Resident Evil. And it's as far as you know, really wild sci-fi concepts. In this season, we have. EM reconstruct. That's wow. That's that's pretty. So like I mean, EMP fries it. It's not like it just deletes it and maybe overrides it. No, no, no. it fries it. And apparently, you know, that can be reconstruct. That's uh, yeah. Wow. And excuse me, that key transfer thing where they get excuse me the key and then the other person just hands it to use. Yeah. We, you know, we see this idea that maybe Sloane will be punished for his crimes, but, you know, that quickly is, you know, undone with, you know, the whole political, you know, influence and, and then we've, we've kind of been there before, but I think it was a good idea to go back there and to you know, given that this, you know, this is the season where he's most, you know, 
with without any real like without any moral gray in there this is the season where he is a villain and we see that plain and simple the system can't take him out so it has to be jack jack who's always been willing to break the rules in order to get you know get to the goal because ultimately you know his goal was always a just one and yeah you know at the end of the day you know he and he to some extent feels responsible for Sloan. He you know, he should have done this, you know, long ago kind of thing. And so yeah, so so it's a good idea to, to do the, the thing again. And yeah, in, in this season he's just sinister, which, you know, Ron Rifkin can play rather well, but yeah, it's I've or may have already mentioned, but it's just less interesting than in earlier seasons. And you know, Rachel is is put in you know in the trunk, and you know they clearly just watched some Tarantino. And Jack, even Reservoir Dogs, you know Raven's father. And you know, yeah, the the magnet lifting card thing was, yeah, it was it was interesting, and a, a cool concept and you know my my experience reminded me apparently I you know I noticed that you know on on my first viewing of the the show which you know not quite 10 years ago but yeah that you know I apparently noted that Sid fights a woman close to her in you know in every season finale but the first one you know and and several of them it's even like family but yeah always a woman close to her in one way or another you know Lauren and her had both been with Vaughn Francie you know technically that wasn't Francie but yeah you know it was as if she was fighting Francie and now that it won't spoil, I can say that, you know, in season three, the finale, I want to say, was the last time we saw the rotunda. So it was a good idea to blow it up, to have that effective scene. It's like when, you know, in season one, when SD6 headquarters are attacked. It's this thing of, you know, they can hit us at home. You know, even the base they can get into. And, you know, in, I think it's a commentary track, they, they, you know, say, you know, Tom is mysterious, you know, might he betray them? And it, I don't know, I, I really doubt, I don't, I never thought that he would. I mean, Jack recruited him. Jack would clearly, you know, make sure that this is a guy that they can ultimately trust, even if, you know, at first it's, you know, does he take orders? And yeah. My ex fiance posed the question, which is the more complicated relationship for Jack, Sloan or Irina? You know, both having, you know, over 30 years of history and both having betrayed him, but still he can't completely hate them, he can't completely break from them, and they've been useful and really helped out, but they're also dangerous in the years since. And, you know, she pointed out when exactly did Arena start working for, you know, Profit 5 with the, yeah, since, you know, since they've been doing this whole thing for all these, you know, decades, but, you know, yeah. And, you know, page 47 is brought back, and I think... It was, you know, I, I like that, you know, through Rachel, you know, who's Rambaldi? And then we get that. And then what's page 47? And then we get, you know, and the the thing with, you know, what was it? The sky of Mount Sebastio and 
that was actually, you know, about that thing down in the mountain. And again, I I guess it's possible that they wrote that way back in season one, I want to say. But, you know, it's it's like that they just thought, hey, could you know, we could make that mean something else. And yeah, I, I think that was a really good way to, yeah, to, to do that, you know, because that way genuinely, you know, yeah, they hadn't seen the the you know and I guess the idea is that ultimately it is actually Irina who the prophecy spoke of and she didn't see you know Sid saw it and Sloan saw it but Irina didn't see the the sky thing with you know Mount Sebastio so yeah and the Yeah, I, I quite liked, you know, and, and, you know, she poses to Sydney that, you know, you have to, you can't be both. You have to be a spy or a mother. And, you know, with Sloan gone and Arena gone, Rambaldi no longer being a threat, you know, Sydney chooses mo motherhood over spy. And, you know, I mean, she she more or less wanted out since the the pilot or maybe the episode after it she was like when sloan is gone i'm out and yeah sloan is now gone so and you know the i yeah i, I quite liked you know as far as you know vaughn not in that many episodes but among the ones was the really good use of him in, you know, in the horizon with, you know, in these really defining moments of their relationship, her memory of that, mixing in the new dialogue with the old, you know, thing. You just threw your your phone in the Pacific twice, you know, instead of just, and, and they both did great on, you know, recreating those performances and such. And just, yeah, I thought that was a really nicely done. And yeah, I, I've always liked when, when they do that on the show, you know, have someone go through their memories or be in a dream and such. They, they really get to do some really interesting stuff there. And yeah, Irina tells us that, you know, the KGB made her have Sid. And yeah, the I, th I think you know also getting closure on that was maybe a good you know it's again this kind of thing of what my parents want for me and what I was meant to, you know how they chose to be you know it's she's you know since the moment she found out that. Well, yeah, she, she, for a long time, she's worried that she is like her mother, that she, too, is, you know, like, evil, or that she, and choosing family, choosing to be a mother over being a spy, you know, making the opposite choice of what Irina did is, you know, yeah, she's going to raise the, you know, her, her child won't be abandoned. And the, you know, and I like the, the cute little wink of, you know, she, you know, Isabel, you know, Kissabel, she, she puts the, the, yeah, the, the figure together, which we also see the, the flashback. And, you know, and then she knocks it over and says, oh, nothing, you know, this cute little, you know, and of course, you know, Mike's fiance and I are far from the only to have, you know, wanted a next generation alias. And, you know, among the, you know, obviously, Isabel, then, you know, by now an adult could be, you know, one of the spies, you know, Sark could easily return. Maybe he had a child with, you know, one of, and the, yeah, you know, there, there are various 
characters that could, you know, come back and, and such. And, you know, I, I, I mentioned in the Season 4 video that if, if you only have, you know, one really excellent spy as a parent, then, you know, yeah, your child won't be as excellent of a spy. And, you know, again, now that it's no longer spoiler, you know, I guess that means that the, the, yeah, the several children of Sid's and Vaughn's, because of Vaughn, will not be quite as excellent. And, you know, if Nadia and Weiss had had any, also not quite as, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the thing of, you know, don't look at me, you're the one who let him go, you know, and obviously that's supposed to say that, you know, after, you know, they negotiated and then, you know, Vaughn came out to, be, you know, with, with Sid and he let Sarko, you know, I like to think that it's yet again just Vaughn failing, you know, he, he meant to, to actually restrain him, but, you know, again, it, yeah. At first I was annoyed. It was getified. How could Alias go on after Vaughn's homicide? But then Nadia returns and Raven, she is super cool. Interest grew strong and then the story moved along. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.